Hello everybody, I'm Mixed Mars and Merman and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be working on a, a little tiny home user grade style uh, wood chipper and shredder that I got off of my friend Johnny. He bought in a, about two or three bits of kit, two chippers, uh, three chippers and a, a trench whacker which will be coming up very shortly in, in later videos. I have already sold the little electric chipper that went off to a home user um, lawn care guy just to do little tiny bits and pieces with, but uh, this one is a petrol one. I think it has got a five or eight horsepower decumps on top. Um, I have pulled it over, it is free. I haven't had done anything to it other than just, just try and pull it over so it wasn't seized because I bought these for scrap value. Um, I've got two or three of them and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. I have also bought another one which I think may have been sold already, so that, that could be good. So. That's what we're going to be doing today. So if you want to know how to um, service start one of these uh, little tiny uh, MTD style Aryan sort of um, uh, Allen style chippers, then this will be the video for you. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mars and Mar Man, hit the subscribe button or whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I'll have another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's try and get this little tiny wood chipper shredder up and running and doing what it should be doing. Right, so a little mosey, just see what it is. Uh, as I say, I picked, um, these were delivered to me off of Mate Johnny, I've not seen him for about two years. But he started doing um, a bit of a garden clearance and stuff now. So I've got two or three of them actually. Um, this is one we're doing today. Uh, I think it's the Allen, yes, the Allen uh, Leaf Shredder Chipper. I've also got this MTD one over here as well. That one's just there. And also got the bear cat right at the back as well. That's coming off of Johnny as well. But this one over here, I picked up off of uh, some gentleman over, he was in Salesy Way. He was selling it on, um, on a marketplace, absolutely cheap as chips. And I thought, oh, I'll have some of that. Um, I know my mate Gabriel was interested in it because he wanted it for his own law care business, but I think I beat him to it. So um, that's what it is. Um, so there's a bit of water in there because it has just been outside. It has just lashed down with rain for the video. So this one, as I say, I picked up. This is now sold. I think my, my number one fan, Marky Boy, is going to have this one. He's interested in it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. So this one, effectively, is the same as the one over there. Pretty much the same. I think it's got the same engine, same, same everything on it. And um, yeah, it's all good. This one runs. It will have to have a service before it goes out anywhere. In fact, it's a fat sound, the spark plug looks quite, looks quite good. So, let's uh, give that some pumps. Just show you this one working. Half chat. Just uh, runs. So that does everything it should do. Um, also a bit of an oil change on it, I dare say. Um, but I have tried the shredder facility on it and, and it all shreds and does exactly what it should do. So that is pretty much good to go. A bit of a tidy up, bit of a service up and uh, we'll be golden on that one. So that one is doing a lot more than this one. And um, that's what I want to get in. All the tires are flat on it. I may even try and put some different style wheels on it. If I can't get them wheels to pump up, we'll see how we get on. But let's get that one into um, into the shed up on the bench. What I may do, I may remove uh, this part of the chute off it just with five bolts. It's under five bolts. Um, take that chute off. This one, get in just to make it a bit more manoeuvrable, um, and we'll go from there. So next time you see this thing, it'll be up on the bench, and then uh, we we'll get to work on this one. At the moment, it does pull over. It has got oil in it, but uh, it doesn't do anything when you put fuel in it at all. So once I put the carburetor clean and the service up, I'm gonna go from there. Right, we got it up on the old bench. Uh, that was a no mean feat. Um, the wheels, uh, the tyres are, are off the rim, so to speak. So what I intend to do, I have seen a little hack where you put some rope around the rim, uh, twist it with a stick or a bar to squish the tyre down so it hits a bead and then try and inflate it. So I will try and do that a bit later on. 
Uh, but my main concern before I do anything on the tyres is to try and get this, this machine to actually work and do what it should do. Because um, at the moment, it is not. It's not doing a thing. Now, it all seems to be in place. Bear in mind, this was sold to me as a going concern, uh, scrap value only, um, just to um, get rid of it. This was going to go to a scrap yard. So anything I, uh, I get out of this machine, um, if it runs, we're, we're quids in. So let's just check the oil first. We've got oil in and we are, we're, yeah, we're just about up to the ad mark. The machine is slightly tipped backwards. If the wheels were pumped up, it'd be just above the ad, I dare say. So we'll just put a little bit of oil in there anyway, just to, just to help it along. Yeah, it's just literally on the ad mark. So let's just get a bit of oil first off before we do anything, just to put a little tiny sliver into there just so we know for a fact it's got enough, enough oil to run. I will have an oil change anyway, before we do anything. Uh, the spark plug isn't new. It's not completely new. Let's just put a bit of oil in. Just so I know, just for peace of mind, um, we've got a, above the ad mark on it. It's never good when machines are running a bit low on oil. So let's let that drain down. We'll check that again in a minute. Uh, air box is here. This has got an eight horse, eight horsepower to comps on it. Uh, I think it's a flathead, I think. Well, for top mid, I think. I was overhead of our flathead. Flathead to comps. Uh, air filter doesn't look very good. So what is a new air filter if I can get one for it? That shouldn't be no, no big drama. If you know where the air filters are for these guys, feel free to uh, send me a link in one of the comments. So that's okay. Um, I think the first thing to do is just to try and get the fire. That's the first thing we want to do, I suppose, is just to try and get it, just to do something. So let's grab a little bit of carby spray. And then we go for just a, a very, very quick little fire so it will actually do anything at all. I know I did try it with fuel and it wasn't happy. So a bit of carburetor spray goes into the, uh, into the choke, into the, uh, the carburetor. Uh, let's put that all, that all filler back on. As we shoot all out everywhere. A bit of carburetor spray in there. Just want just to make a noise. That's all we want it to do. It's on rabbit already. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that went pop. So we're happy with that. So we've got a little bit of life in there. It had a little bit of combustion, nothing too hideous. I think the first thing to do would be to take the carb off. It doesn't run with fuel in it, that's a certainty. And these have been sat in a um, storage container for quite some time. So I've got an air breather pipe off the back here, um, which can come off. I've got, I've got here, cut, just a Phillips screwdriver there. That's nice and easy, we can do that. I've got tools everywhere again at the moment. So remove this air breather box. It's in quite good condition for the age of it and for um, um, the fact that it's, been, it's just been stored outside. I'm quite happy with that. Let's take that off. Let the breather box and that bracket goes uh, with that bit facing down, okay? Just so we know for future reference in the video. That can come out of the way. And then on the back here, just want to take a quick photograph and just show you guys the, the throttle assembly setup that's already currently in place. There's your throttle assembly already, already in place. So you've got loads of holes all over this. Um, the throttle does move to a degree. It's not, it's not brilliant, but oh, it does move a bit. So there's your throttle assembly. There it is there, that's where it all goes, just for future reference. And on the back there as well, on the back governor arm, that's where it's all sitting. So just you need to refer back to the video and you've got it all there, okay? So one good quick view. And what I do with that is I'll just take a quick little shot of that on my, uh, on my own personal phone as well. Just a quick reference guide for when I um, put the carburetor back together. Okay, so typical decumps, uh, I'm going to remove it off the manifold. I just cracked the two bolts off the back of the manifold here because you, you can't get around here. Yeah, it's just one of them things. Decumps, the engines, you can't get around here to do it properly. Um, so I cracked the two manifold bolts off. One there and one there. And they're like a T27 star, something like that. And that way you can then take the whole lot off in one go rather than just uh, take the carby off, which would make sense in some people's eyes to take the whole, whole machine apart. Um, but that's what it is. Yep, two seconds, Mrs. Pete. There you go. So, remove the bolt at the back there. It's going to be no easy 
Mrs. P, get your fingers in there. Huh? It's all right. Yeah. Um, so that's that done. So now I might have to remove the rest of this exhaust guard as well, which means undoing all of this stuff, which I don't want to undo either. So I've got one bolt here, one bolt here, one bolt here. 35,000 bolts to remove just to loosen that off maybe, or can I get it? Oh, can it, will it give it me? Are they gonna give it me? Oh, behave yourself. The bracket right at the back of this back of this exhaust. Oh, it's nearly there. There it goes. All right, okay. All right, we're halfway there. So now I've got most of it. I'm gonna remove this fuel line as well. I don't think there's no fuel in that tank anyway. Have a look. No. Nope. <sighs> Good. So I didn't have, to, didn't have to remove three quarters of the engine just to get to it. So I can now remove this fuel line. Now I have seen Luke from Mendit Man, he done one of these a little while ago. Um, and he said the fuel lines are a bit of a pickle because they go right back behind the engine. So I'm hoping to get away with not doing any of that. If I can help it, I don't want to damage anything. So I'm going to go very careful trying to remove this fuel line if I can. It seems to want to want to come off. We've got all the linkages here, see, which I don't want to damage. Once I get that linkage off, we should be halfway golden what we've got on there what is that that's a tip up let's go that way it chokes in the way now oh it's all in the way isn't it? oh that should give me that there it goes oh, that's that one gone and that went on the very very back hole as per my photograph so now i should better literally just try and pull pull that out of there get some hose some hose pliers on it Twisting. It's not lifting. I might just get a tiny flathead driver in there and all, Mick. Just to uh, lever said fuel line out. It's not been, I don't think it's been apart for a little while, is this? It's a bit gummed up. Oh, I don't want to damage the fuel line. Anyway, shape or form. Come on, baby. Oh my word. It's right proper on there, mate. Is it twists? Isn't it funny? You think that would just come straight off, wouldn't you? If it twists. But it ain't gonna come off, baby. I've dropped the screwdriver. And that's probably gone down a bit of it, is it? Into the depths of uh of the ground. I might have to edit this bit out. Should have, done, should have done a 40 minute video, how to take a fuel line off of a carburetor. Oh, it's going to snap a bit. There it goes, it's coming now. It's been on there a while, that's that, there it goes. Cool, so there's a carby, in all its glory. Um, doesn't look too shocking, um, And first initial thoughts, but it, it's going to be messy in there, I know it is. I'm going to run a little bit of fuel down through uh, down through here just to make sure we haven't got no surprises. Uh, in fact, I can do that now. Let's just get a got a jug here, a little bit of petrol. Just want just want to put a, a bit through, just make sure we are we are getting a fuel um, a fuel flow. Let me do it at the same time as doing that. <coughs> so I'm going to put my jug in place and just pour a little bit of fuel. Not a lot, just a bit, just enough, just to wet the old whistle. Just to make sure we are getting something. Yep. There's a bit of flow there. Here it comes. Yep, good flow now. So yeah, we are getting fuel. That's good then. So we're happy with that. Oh, a bit more. Okay. Um, so I'll put the carburetor up onto a bench and then we'll get the carburetor taken apart, cleaned, looked at, and hopefully um, we'll be on a bit of a winner here. I'm gonna tip this machine back a touch as well, just so we can actually um, get a decent flow off, off, off of this fuel line but there is now fuel coming out of there, which is good. So I'm happy with that. Um, let's get a set of clamps on that, stop that uh, from leaking all over the place. <coughs> Try and stem that flow a little tiny bit. There's not a lot of fuel in there, as I say, I just, just put a dribble in, didn't I, just to, just to hold it off. So we'll lock that off like so, and then we're gonna head back and um, get this carburetor cleaned. 
So I'll meet you over on the bench. Okay, up on the old bench with a carburetor. Um, here she be. I've got one nut to take off of here. Uh, seven, sixteen, I think it was. Loosen that one off. And that'll then get rid of a manifold. We don't want me to take all that apart. Because this may have to go into the cleaner yet. I've got no idea of condition of carby, so. Take that bolt out of there. You've got one around this side here and all. Everything's just hard work with these machines. Still, it's good fun educating yourself. That should now just come off very gently. Mind that little tiny gasket there, it'll come off in one go. That's lovely to see. That gonna come off Mick or not? You gonna play ball with me, Mr. Mr. Gasket? You gonna behave yourself? Yeah, you are, good girl. Right, okay, so that's that off there. Down the back here, that'd be half inch. Crack that off, that come off nice. And we'll see if it's been stored, oh Lord, with uh, petrol in it or not. Petrol in it, yay! So we've got, we've got oil in there, which is not a bad thing really. I'd rather have oil than I'd rather have um, uh, congealed petrol and rust. But look at that bowl, look, one quick wipe, look. That bowl looks spanking already. Uh, uh, so I've got a an O-ring, which looks to be in good condition too. So we're happy with that. I have a pair of little long nose pliers. I should have in my carburetor drawer here. I believe these were a gift from my mate Ken. Well, about a year ago he bought me these. Still using them, Ken. Still got them, baby. He bought me an orange pair as well, I think. Uh, little pair of tooth pullers, as I call them. Take that pin out. Take that out. There's our little tiny uh, needle there. So it's just full of oil initially. So I'll give it a clean and get, get the old pocket rocket on that. And we're going to have a decent clean up. I think the old pocket rocket would be ideal for that. There's no way it would have run like that anyway. I have no concern that it had oil in the carburetor. No concern at all. So a good clean throughout. In every single hole that there is. Get right up in there, look, under that Welch plug. Around the front here, there's a hole down here. That's good, and there's one just above it as well. It should be about there, nearly there. Yeah, that's good. We like. That's actually coming apart quite well. That was a bit bunged up in there where that seat was. So, there's a little seat in there. I can see the seat. Cool. But all I'm doing is just giving us a really good clean where I can. Nothing, nothing untoward in this car, but there's no no hidden little extras. There's a little mixing, hidden mixing screw just there, but I'm going to leave that be. I'm not, I'm not really going to touch that. Is that going to come out of there or not, Mick? Let's have a little look and see if that come out of there. It is hidden. They want to hide it from you. They're not very good at hiding stuff from me. It's only got a little tiny cap on it. This is your mixture screw in here. You get hold of it. Normally just heat these up with a little bit of little bit, little bit of a lighter, just heat them up. And then they come off just like that, you see. They hide it. There's a little tiny mixer in, in there. So I'm gonna take that out and give that a clean as well. Uh, so I just want to make sure it's set back to where it was beforehand. Let me grab my uh um oh, I've got a little tiny wall bro one here, which, which my mate Steve gave me actually. Um let's see where that is. That's a, that's a, that's about three o'clock, so we're gonna go. Oh, it's not all way up tight, is it? All that tight, cool. All right, that's no drama then. So we'll take that out. I want to get right in there, see, because this has been sat for a while. So let's take that out. There's a little tiny jet in there as well. I'm gonna go right in there. Yeah, likes it, baby. 
that's coming straight out of the emulsion tube. So that's really clean that emulsion tube up. That's worth, that's definitely worth doing. Look at that, lush. A general tidy, general clean. And that's it. Apart from the main jet, which would be down here, got to clean that one up, which I should probably use a bit of carburetor cleaner on that one, just to clean that up. There's a little tiny jet in there, a little tiny jet in there, that'll be fine. I've got to do a pressure test on my carby, but apart from that, quick and easy. So let me get the main jet cleaned and this jet here, screw that back in, get it reassembled, back over to the machine, see you then in two ticks. Right, carby's now cleaned and I put the manifold back on just on the bench for quickness and from what I remember it goes on this little tiny hole here the throttle assembly which is the uh, the nearest nearest to it okay so that I remember so I'm trying to fit that on first and then try and just loop this manifold round the back it's not very easy we've got to go up quite a considerable way yet I'm going to release that fuel there won't be a lot of fuel left in here because there wasn't a lot of fuel went in, in the first place but we'll get a bit a bit of seepage so to speak move that choke out of the way Mick all right that's what I got like that so let's put the fuel hose on if I can get it this is the fun and joys you have when you uh don't remove the uh the exhaust that's got to go up like that if I put that around the right way, I think I have. I might have even put the manifold around the wrong way yet, guys. That's got to go like that, that's got to go like that. Yeah, I think I put the manifold around the wrong way. <coughs> I think. That's set up right, oh, it seems to be quite right. No, it's around the wrong way, I think. Let me take that manifold off quick. That wants to sit about there. Yeah, it's around the wrong way, so. Schoolboy errors, but that happens. I don't mind showing my mistakes. So let's remove that uh, off of the throttle before I break that. Just gonna remove this manifold quickly. <coughs> that was my own fault. <coughs> I can actually see there's a bit of gasket on there, so that's where that one come from. <coughs> Let's remove that. Right, let's just present that. That's why I had it before, Mick, so it's got to go that way like that then. Me thinks, on like that, on like that, yes, yeah, so, so it goes that way. So that's a carby. So, for reference, the writing is up the right way around, okay? So you guys and girls know. Let's put that bolt back into there. Another bolt. And it goes round and round again. Oh, make a right pig's ear out of this. Right and round the right way. That's been got to go round that way. Like that. So the bolt goes through this one. Like that. Then the gasket. Another bolt round the back here. Now we all make mistakes. But I'd rather make a mistake now and show you guys my mistake so you guys don't make a mistake later. That's the idea. Right, that all goes onto there. And then we get our carby. That goes onto there. And we've just got to fight now for an hour and a half getting these nuts on. We're going to get one on straight away, that's no drama. Just to hold it. That's good. But this one here, I can't get hold of it. This one is a bit more of a mission. You've got to, you've got to sort of put the nut in place and get your screwdriver at the same time. You've got to push that bolt back so the nut sits down flush. Something like that, nearly. It's got a, it's got a, a washer on this nut, you see. Once it bites, you're waving. Here it goes. It's gone now. Draw that one in. Like that, and then that one there. Not the best fitting screwdriver to be fair. Right, that's on. So now we go again. I can now put my, my throttle one on. 
on the same hole as before. Boom, on that goes. I'm going to try and slip that manifold up around the back like that. And I've got my fuel hose here to go on. Now, I'm going to snip that bit of fuel hose off there because it was just a little bit split. Not much, about three or four mil. But that will cause issues later on if we don't put it on right. So as I say, this machine was sold to me as spares or repair scrap value. So if I can get it to run, what I pay scrap value, well, in fact, I've, I've nearly earned the money back already just by selling the electric one. He wanted to keep that funny enough and sell it himself, but when it turned up, it was actually seized, but I just took it apart and spun the motor head and it went, it was sold, sold that day. Right, that's all on now. So now I can just get hold of that manifold, put that into place. There's two big bolts here, which go up inside the, up inside the manifold up here. One about there. Just loose him up to begin with, just to line it up. And you've got number two. Just got to go all the way through a space that don't fit. To come see, see, that's what the country do that. In there, all the way down to the hole where you can't get their fingers into there. And hopefully that's going to line up with a bit of jiggly pokery. I think that's gone now, yeah, it's gone. Right, so that's lined up now then. Cool. So carb has been cleaned, manifold's going back on now, nice and tight. You've got no leaks coming through that. Uh, I've got to put the air breather pipe back on. But what I want to do now, I just want to run some fuel into this machine to make sure I've got no fuel leaks happening. That's all on there tight. And put some fuel in, I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, so... Um, Fuel's now gone in. Just wait and see if anything comes out of here. It shouldn't do. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm surprised it hasn't got one. There's no fuel cut off on here. So I'm going to put around this side fast. I'm going to put a fuel shut off valve on there or, or shut off switch just so you can turn the fuel on and off as well. So um, in case with, with these old Decompte carburetors, you do get a bit of fuel leakage now and again. And uh, it, it does pay dividends to uh, have a fuel shut off valve. So when you actually, you actually stop using it, this sort of machine, unless you're using it every day, you're not going to use it very often at all. So um, it sort of pays to have, have a fuel shut off valve on there. This went this way up, from what I remember. In there like that. Now I will be starting this machine up on the bench, unless I can get the, some air in these tires. Now I do actually have a spare set of wheels, plas solid plastic wheels. I may try and just take them off and just put these plastic ones on there just so I can move it about because um, Without having these tyres pumped up, uh, it's, it's a bit of a swine to get on and off the bench and move it about. So what you can do, as I say, is get a piece of rope and uh, tie it around the, the actual top of the, of the tyre, so to speak, around the top, of the top end of a tyre, squeeze that down and then put your air compressor on and, uh, and do it up. And some, sometimes, it, sometimes they pop up, but I will, I will try. Uh, just tip the machine up onto its side a little tiny bit, or even take the wheel off and do it to try and get some air in. If not, I just need to distinguish. I've got a, a set of wheels in here. Let me just find them, which I thought they might be perfect for this. Um, I found them just the other day, and they're solid. They're a little bit smaller, to be fair, so that, that, that might be an issue. Um, but if they were to fit on there, um, going to cause a problem when I go to um, have a machine in its normal position. So let me just tip the machine up onto the side slightly. I'm going to take this, this cover off, this dust cap off, remove the wheel, and then just try and get some air into these tyres just by putting a bit of rope around them. Get it all set up. I'll show you what I mean, and we'll go from there. Right, so I have seen a little trick online. Um, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a go because this tyre has actually, actually come off the B, so to speak. So what you do is you get a bit of bit of power cord or something like that. You put it along the actual rim of a tyre like so. Then we get like a brake, a bar or extension bar. I'll use a, I'll use a, let me just grab an extension for now. Try that. I don't have it too long. It's not I can actually get hold of. Uh, let's try that one there. <clears throat> And then the idea is, is to put the bar in and then to twist this rope and just keep twisting 
until that tire starts to bite along the bead. It is a bit tricky because of, because of, it always wants to fall off, fall off the tire, you see, because of the way in which you're winding it. So it might pay to start as best you can furthest away. So about here, something like that. And then start to twist it up and it'll start to bite down on the tire and it pushes the center of the tire in and the back of the tire and the edges of the tire uh, away. Something like that. Okay, you can remove your dust cap. Now you want quite a bit of pressure on here because the air will, will, will just leak out. So put plenty of pressure on. Now all you want to do is just let you just to form a good enough seal so you can get some air in here. So let me hook my line up. I don't know if these tires are any good, if they've got big holes in them. I've got absolutely no idea at all. So now by holding that bar, put that onto there, blow the tire up, release your cord as you do it. Like so, and then you have one fully inflated tire. If you can get, that's leaking out the valve. Is it or not? No, it's not. It's my hose what leak. Cool. So, for a little tire that was um, a minute ago stone cold flat is now stone cold pumped. Bomp, bomp. Let me turn the machine around the other side and I'll do the same on the other side. If your tire's popped off its bead on your ride on mower, chipper, shredder, and uh, you've got no pump and you're out in the field, this could be quite handy for you. Get a boot lace, bit of string, power cord, whatever you've got handy. Tie it around the tire. Make sure the rope stays on. Take some pressure up. Force the center of a tire down onto the rim. Grab your air hose, compressor, whatever you've got to hand. Hook it up. Bit more pressure. Boom. Lease some pressure as you go. Fully inflate it. And you're good to go. Okay, so nice little trick for you there, for your, for your tyres. Hopefully they'll stay up. Um, I'll keep an eye on them overnight and whatever next morning, see how they're getting on. But uh, they're up solid now, and uh, I think it might be just be where it's been sat for a little while, so hopefully they'll stay up. I haven't got to buy any new tyres for it. Um, but that make it easy for me to push about now. So carburetor's been done. Um, I'll leave it as it is for spark plug and what have you. I've got a bit of fuel in my tank, no fuel looks by the looks of it. Let's get it outside, get the chute back on it, and then um, let's see if it don't fire up, eh? So it does do. Hopefully, uh, it'll run. So uh, let me get the uh, machine outside, put the chute back on it, and then uh, we'll go for a fire up. Right, so it's out. As I say, it's easier on the wheels. Um, now that they're pumped up, uh, that was a bit difficult to do it with beforehand. Um, I think I've got to do, I've got to sort the stand out because the stand isn't brilliant. Uh, it rocks about a bit and it will it will actually fold down on that so I've got to sort that out um, but that's no biggie just to sort that out I can I can get around that so I may just have to hold it whilst uh, if, it, if it actually starts I don't know why it's not uh, that bracket's a bit loose there but that should come up but it's not it goes to about there that's a bit better Mick all right there you go is that going to stand uh, yeah that one's looking at 
it's not it's not locking in the correct position but hey ho it's what it is i can figure that out no no uh, no drama um so carburetor clean air filters off fuel in the tank it's got oil in it wheels are pumped up let's see what it actually does now so onto choke there uh, a little bit of rabbit uh, that's stop i don't want to go mad to begin with it's been it's been stood for a little while so let's see how we get on it's on the choke full chat full choke There you go. I think maybe the, uh, the chipper might want to do in this end, but uh, I've just got to sort the blades out, have a little look at that. Just to undo this, this chute here and sort them blades out, have a quick inspection. But the branch wasn't easiest to put in there, to be fair. It got caught up a little bit, but it shreds that, that lovely. That's about a half inch thick. Um, so it all runs. Yeah, I'm happy with that, man. For something that was actually going, that's something that's actually going to be scrapped, you know, scrapped away and, and thrown out, um, sent to the scrappy. It runs. I'm going to get take that off, and I'm going to put. I'm just going to get half a mini wheel or three quarters of a mini wheel, just a bolt onto that, just to tidy that up. Um, because there's a guard inside here, so you can't put your hand in, obviously. Um, just to uh, make make sure you get the, the right amount of stuff coming out, because you don't want to be putting your hand in there. But my lord, a scrap machine that uh, was only going to go one way down for tippy. A bit of choke maybe Mick. Not been running very long. I don't want to knock it off that stand, that's a problem. Yeah, baby, super, super happy. Okay, there you go. One Allen chipper shredder now all up and running. Got to have a full service. Need to find a uh, new air filter for it. Got to put a new spark plug in. I should drain it all out, put new oil in. I will just check the blades on the chipper side of it um, because it did get a bit caught up, but I dare say they're a bit dull and I believe you can turn them round on those, I, I believe. So maybe a question, just take it apart and then just undo the blade, swap them back round and they're good to go. If not, I should put them in the vise, sharpen them up, put them back in and that'd be good to go as well. So yeah, all up and running. For someone that's gonna head to the scrapyard, it was on its way, apart from um, someone uh, called Johnny dropped it off around my house and said, give me scrap value for it, uh, for one, two, three chippers and a whacker packer. And um, now it's up and running. I kept another machine out of landfill. Absolutely fantastic. And I should make some serious, serious money on that when it comes to sell. So looking forward to that. All I'm gonna do is just put a little tiny mini tire on the side just to stop people putting their hands up inside so it diverts the chippings out. Um, just for safety reasons, there is a guard inside there anyway. Um, but apart from that, no, I'm super happy, good to go. I didn't think it's gonna start as well as that being uh, one of those engines that I don't particularly like. But uh, it is what it is. Um, it, it surprised me. I always have said that those sort of size um, engines and the, the way in which the shaft is propelled out of the engine, they do run better than the standard rotary lawnmowers that we all know and hate. Um, so there you go. If you like this little video of Mixed Mowers Man, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.